This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. Now, this is a very short lecture on uh, Accounting Standard uh, Number 16, uh, which gives what you might call the rules for accountants in relation to non-current assets, to tangible non-current assets, property, plant uh, and equipment. Uh, and although the standard itself is enormous, um, all you really need uh, for your exam uh, are the points that are on that page in the free lecture notes. And as you can see, the main points, um, the conditions for recognition of a tangible non-current asset, it, in that it, it must be probable that future benefits will come to the business from having the asset, uh, and that we can, obviously, that we can measure the cost reliable uh, they say depreciation should be charged over the useful life, uh, with the exception of land. Uh, land, normally, we assume land lasts forever, uh, and therefore it's the one asset we normally don't depreciate. Otherwise, we must depreciate assets over their useful life. You know, buildings might last for 100 years, but there is a limited life, so the building itself must be depreciated. Um, I mentioned briefly revaluations, and the, as I said in the last lecture, we'll, uh, I'll say more about it when we come to the lecture on limited companies. But um, any upward re revaluation has to go to a revaluation reserve. You'll see that, as I say, in the lecture on limited companies later. Um, and if we do revalue uh, one asset, we must value or revalue all the assets in that class. Uh, so what we mean there is if we have um, 20 machines and we decide to revalue one machine, well, we have to revalue all the machines. Or again, buildings. We might have several buildings. We can't just revalue one of them. Revalue one, we'd have to revalue all of them. Uh, the disclosure requirements. Uh, I said, uh, again, in the earlier lectures, um, there's no rule as to how we depreciate. We de depreciate in whatever we think is the most sensible way. Uh, for the exam, it's straight line depreciation or reducing balance. However, there has to be a note attached to the financial statements saying what methods of depreciation have been used. You know, maybe buildings we depreciate a straight line over 100 years. Maybe cars we depreciate re 25% reducing balance. Well, we must state the methods used. Uh, we have to disclose the total cost of each asset heading and the accumulated depreciation at the beginning and end of the period. So all being there, uh, for each type of asset, so for motor cars, for buildings, etc., uh, we have to have a note showing uh, what the total cost was at the beginning of the year, what the total depreciation was at the beginning of the year, the accumulated, and similarly, what the total cost and the total accumulated are at the end of the year. Uh, a reconciliation of the net book values at the beginning and end of the period, well, we need to explain why they've changed. Uh, the cost will have changed from beginning to end of the year because we've bought more assets, because we've sold assets. The accumulated depreciation will have changed because uh, we've charged depreciation, obviously, and we take out depreciation on any assets that have been sold. Uh, in addition, if there has been a revaluation, that will obviously change the balance. And so there has to be a statement showing, again, for each type of asset, uh, what the change has been in the cost of accumulated over the year. So, as I say, there's a lot more in the statement itself, but uh, what's written there really is, is what you need for the exam. Uh, 